OSPF stub areas. There are four uh, stub areas. One is stub area, totally stub area, not so stubby area, or NSSA, or NSSA totally stub. So in this video, I'm just going to talk about stub area. So stub area uh, restrictions are no type A, ASBR, SLA, LSA, or five AS external LSA is allowed. <clears throat> so the the only allowed the only allowed uh, LSAs are type one, two, three. Those are uh, router LSA, network LSA, and summary LSA. LSA, yeah. So stub areas. These areas do not accept routes belonging to external autonomous systems. However, these areas have inter-area and intra-area routes. In order to reach the route, the outside networks, the routers in the stub area use a default route, which is injected into the area by the ABR or area border router. A stub area is typically configured in situations where the branch office need not know about all the routes to every other uh, office. Instead, it could use the default route to the central office and get to other places from there. Hence, the memory requirements of the leaf node routers is reduced and so is the size of the OSPF database. So this is the topology that I'm going to use in this video. So let's say our remote office is this one. So this would be the remote office. <clears throat> um, I mean, area one should be the remote office actually. Let me just see if I can because you would actually use this for a remote office. Remote office. So yeah, so R1 and R2 are both in area zero and R2 is the SA ABR in this uh, setup because you know it is uh, it belongs to two different areas, area zero and area one and R3 is just in area one. And we can see the subnets being used uh, on the segments and R1 has a interface here uh, loopback interface actually all right so I actually already configured the I mean the basic uh, OSPF configurations so we can see here that I'm actually redistributing uh, the loopback, the IP address on this loopback zero into OSPF. We can see that here. And uh, we are just, you know, um, configuring this subnet to be in areas, to be in area zero, the subnet to be in area zero, and the subnet to be in area zero. We can see that here, and this subnet and area, sorry, area zero, area one, and this one is area one. And let me just go to the routers, and we can actually 
look at the topology while looking at the uh, the configurations. So this is the configuration on, on R1, and this is the configuration on R2 and on R3. And I can verify that uh, neighbor ships are working on all the routers. And then we can also check that, let me just show, let me make it smaller. Let's, um, issue that command. So it says here that Stub area, so in our in our case, stub area is this one. This I mean area one is the stub area. <clears throat> you know what? Let me actually move, make this stub area instead of remote office. And we I can I mean we can verify that because you know we we configured this on R2 and R3, right? And um, so it says here that a stub area does not have type 4 ASBR and type 5 AS external SLA, LSAs. So if we check the OSPF database, we can still see those because um, we're not making it uh, a stub area yet. So we can we can see the OSPF nothing here. I mean OSPF configuration. The, this command is not there yet. <clears throat> so yeah, this is router LSA, uh, network LSA, summary LSA, LSA. Uh, ASBR LSA and <clears throat> external LSA. So, so this is the so this is the goal of this video, right? To make this to make area one as a stub area. So let me do this. Let me just copy and paste this configuration on R2. And on R3. And let me just go back to the topology here. So let's check the this. <clears throat> so before we were uh, lear learning this, um, what do you call this? External route, right? This is you where we were learning it from R2. So it says E2 meaning yeah, external route here. And also we are learning this <clears throat> uh, from uh, VR2 as well. But if we check now, oops, it's not really a good output. Oops. Oh, this is not the oh, great. That's not the command that I want. I want this. Okay, there we go. So now we only we don't see we don't see the external route anymore. We only see a default route installed here in the routing table via R2. And of course, we still see the summary route. I mean, this route here, <clears throat> and that would that would be the the summary LSA. 
and we can verify that by doing this command. Yeah, this one. Yes. So we don't see the ASBR LSA and external LSA anymore because uh, R1 is, I mean, area one is now a stubby area or a stub area. So that's how you can configure a area to be a uh, stub area, or you can configure OSPF stub area. So yeah, that's all in this video. Thanks for watching.